Blessed All Souls Day. We know as humans that there is a great mystery and a darkness that surrounds the reality of death. But as Catholics, we know by our faith that there is a historical fact that one person overcame death. He went through death and came out the other side and will never die again. And that, of course, is Jesus. And Jesus has the desire to bring us back out of the other side of death. As Catholics, we're also blessed to have so many signs and symbols that give us hope, that help us persevere in this valley of tears, in this time before death, to help shed light on that mystery and, and help us cling to Jesus' resurrection. I've been walking around in our beautiful St. Mary's Cemetery, praying for the souls of the faithful departed, as I do often when I go out to St. Patrick's as well. I've been praying with this rosary. This rosary belonged to a great aunt and then to a cousin, both of whom uh, passed away. And both of them clung to this rosary as they prayed the mysteries of Jesus' life and as they believed in hope that they would share in Jesus' life. And so as they held fast to this cross, uh, they united their own sufferings to his cross and therefore they will be united to his glory. What a beautiful thing and what a beautiful uh, reality that we have in our funeral rites, our Catholic funeral rites. So today, as we uh, begin this month of November, this month dedicated to praying for the dead, uh, let's remember to pray for our loved ones. Uh, also pray for all those souls in purgatory who maybe have no one to pray for them. Um, we gain a plenary indulgence through this whole month by visiting a cemetery or by praying for the dead. And then, of course, going to confession and receiving communion somewhere uh, close to that time and praying for the intentions of the Holy Father. Monsignor and I also really want to uh, just encourage everyone to make sure to communicate to your loved ones um, what you desire upon your death, uh, especially to make sure that they know um, that you desire a funeral mass. Um, often, uh, way too often, there are good faithful Catholics who pass on uh, who deserve the, all the rights of the Catholic Church, um, but for many different reasons, um, they don't receive those because uh, the people who survive them don't necessarily request that. Uh, and so I encourage you to, especially to, to plan ahead of time to, to talk with uh, one of us priests or with, uh, with the funeral director uh, to put it in writing. If your loved ones can see your own handwriting saying uh, what you want for your funeral mass, um, perhaps if you want to choose the songs or the readings beforehand, but at the very least just saying my, my one desire is that I have a, a mass uh, for the repose of my soul. If they see that, then it's, it's more likely that that will happen. Uh, that's the one thing that we all can do for those who have gone beyond us, those who have passed away, is we can offer up our prayers and the most powerful prayer, which is the prayer of the Mass. I pray that this day and this month bring hope and comfort, especially for those who are mourning. Uh, we pray especially for those who have lost a loved one really recently. Uh, we know that time doesn't always heal those wounds. The only thing that ultimately can heal those wounds is the vision of our loved one at the end of time. Until then, we persevere, we move forward, we hope, and we, we cling to all of the signs and symbols that the church has given us, the rosary, our prayers for the dead, the mass. And in that hope, we look forward to ultimately joining with Jesus and all of the saints and our loved ones forever in heaven. Thanks. God bless.